I go through sort of basically like my favorite um, artists. And we've, the first bit was very much dedicated to um, one, like highlighting Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings and all these people who I love, but two, also, you know, making the argument, which I think is an important one to make, um, not just for country music, but a lot of culture and obviously uh, deeply Southern culture is just reclaiming that from these just know nothing conservatives um, who like act like they are the inheritors of a genre of music and a culture that is just not theirs to own. <laughs> Uh, a while back um on give them an argument i think they the live stream is every like saturday afternoon is mm-hmm. that right and um uh david here does a uh, a segment on that show would you mind giving the skinny on on what that shows or that segment is about yeah it's uh it's uh the segment is called outlaws and revolutionaries uh, which is a fun title yeah um and i mean you know ben and i have been buddies for a few years now you know we met through tmvs as you would imagine but he'd come up and We'd hang out, and Ben and I both have, uh, you know, proclivity to to drink um, and mm-hmm. you know stay out. You know, so we go to like we had like for example our, our live shows up here in Brooklyn. Um, you know, where we'd have people in, in a studio audience, which were always a blast. Um, but you know, afterwards, I would go out to get drinks, and Ben and I would be the last people at the bar. And oftentimes, he'd just come over to my place, and I would be in a different state of mind, uh, which always means for me that I'm putting country music on, and nobody can say anything against it. Um, and, (laughs) and Ben didn't mind it at all. And, uh, you know, we just, we, we just, uh, you know, had a lot of fun doing that. And, uh, um, yeah, from that, we, um, you know, basically when he started the show, he asked me if I wanted to do anything with that, especially because we get together, I'd play music and I'd also like tell him, like, this is why, you know, Johnny Cash is the most radical person or like, Mm -hmm. this is why Willie Nelson is like way more of a a 60s, 70s radical than Bob Dylan, make all these kind of big problematic arguments and like defend them. And then, uh, yeah, you know, basically uh, that that segment uh, is sort of born out of, you know, Ben and I hanging out uh, till the wee hours of the morning. Um, But yeah, but in that, I sort of go through, uh, I go through sort of basically like my favorite um, artists and we've, the first bit was very much dedicated to um, one, like highlighting Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings and all these people who I love, but two also, you know, making the argument, which I think is an important one to make, um, not just for country music, but a lot of culture and obviously uh, deeply Southern culture is just reclaiming that from these just know nothing conservatives. Um, who like act like they are the inheritors of a genre of music and a culture that is just not theirs to own. Um, you know, Outlaws and Revolutionaries, one of the biggest themes in that is how all of these guys uh, were only able to be successful once they took on the, you know, the record companies and started making music their own way. Um, and, you know, that led to, you know, some really interesting, one, I think just incredible music, but two, um, music that was a little bit more in tune with what most people were experiencing on a kind of day-to-day basis, which is why it still speaks to me today. Yeah, no, and it's it's a fantastic segment. And I, I grew up, you know, listening to country. Uh, my dad is, you know, from the South and uh, that he had a, uh, a 78 Thunderbird with an eight track player. Oh yeah. Uh, and just a huge, like three carousels in the backseat of uh, eight tracks that were mostly country. I also got introduced to like Steve Martin's stand up comedy that way. <laughs> um, so that's like most of my my older uh, mm. country knowledge. It's basically just those those eight tracks. And I always learn something new, sometimes about like some newer artists, but you know, some of the more obscure uh, dudes who have that you know maybe without being explicitly political i think often that is a theme that you find with Mm -hmm. uh those guys is that they're not maybe not really thinking about politics but uh definitely like speaking to an experience i I think so no exactly and i mean for me like the reason i get so worked up about it is like you hear it and you listen to it it's like yeah i guess it's not explicitly political i will also just go out on on the line here and say that like i think a lot of explicitly political music is just bad um you know what i mean like i don't know like not like make your songs political don't get me wrong i'm not against that at all but like you know people who go out with like their one goal is to just like basically shout out slogans that we all agree with i don't find that to be that artistically interesting um but that's a side note like um you know what you see a lot with um 
uh, you know, with like with with these guys is that they're expressing like the actual experience of like working people um, in this country, which has a really radical bent to it. Like it doesn't have to be mediated through a, like political program or political party. I mean, hell, like somebody like Merle Haggard, who is oftentimes, in my opinion, wrongly uh, painted as like a conservative. You know, most of his music is about organizing prisoners, you know, against the state. You know what I mean? Like these guys, like not only did they, did, is their music radical, but they live those kind of radical lives that I think a lot of people um, in this country agree with and have been, you know, touched by and consider themselves to think about the world in that way. And for me, um, a lot of country music, especially though, you know, that stuff and that, you know, that kind of golden generation outlaw country, um, it should be something that we see as like, just immensely um, encouraging for our kind of politics that, you know, we actually don't have to build the consciousness as much um, as, as people think, like most people understand they're being screwed over by their boss. Most people hate their boss. Most people don't like uh, the way that they're being exploited. You know, we just like our job is to one, you know, organize and do the kind of political education that's necessary. But like, you know, and, and to do that, we're going to have to tap into that energy. And I just think like we have this incredible well of, uh, you know, of, of proof of just how radical most Americans are actually. Um, and you see that, you know, with Johnny Cash, especially um, with Willie and, and Whalen and all those guys. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just something that I think is going to be important for us going forward is, you know, not making the left being on the left as like a, a cult because right now being on the left is almost like a cultural statement as much as it is a political statement. And I think that that's not a good thing. Um, like, I think that what I'd like to see more is like, I want, you know, like, hell, I mean, sorry, not to ramble, but like, you know, I've been I've been up north for a little while now. And it's like, I like the barbecue. I like to watch college football and I like country music. And I'll tell you, most people I hang out with do not like any of those things. <laughs> um, and, you know, my my hope is not to be an evangelist to like convince people that like, you need to like enjoy these kind of activities that I do, but more it's like, what we want to see or like what I'd like to see is I want to see like left wing college football fans and left wing country music fans because that shows that we're winning. Um, and I just want to like not allow the kind of right to be able to capture those, uh, you know, those things as like, you know, symbols of kind of right wing conservative politics, because I just don't think they belong to them at all. Um, you know, outlaws and revolutionaries, one of the biggest themes in that is how all of these guys uh, were only able to be successful once they took on the, you know, the record companies and started making music their own way. Um, and, you know, that led to, you know, some really interesting, one, I think just incredible music, but two, um, music that was a little bit more in tune with what most people were experiencing on a kind of day-to-day -day basis, which is why it still speaks to me today. It's like they're able to get that that class consciousness in a way that a lot of people on the left, or at least a lot of like liberals, don't have. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, and um, something like one of the biggest successes of the right in in this country, at least, has been kind of making a a cultural relationship between like somehow and i mean it never you know i've read dark money and i've like thought about this so much like how it's just they were able to make this uh like the sleight of hand where they where they connect conservative cultural values with corporations being able to pollute rivers like yeah. it, it's so crazy to me and i mean and it's just like the the history of the south i mean like one thing i i've been trying to push people to is to remember when we look at American history, we all know uh, what American history is. It's a, you know, it's a story of real horror and, and wickedness and, and evil. But for every victory um, that, you know, the forces of like capital have won, for every victory that the right wing have won, there have been people fighting back. And I think one thing that we also really need to do is to be able to reclaim that fight. Like, you know, like Texas, for example, was like a hotbed of like socialism, not just in the United States, but globally for a while. You know, Karl Marx was trying to move to Texas. Um, yeah, you know, and it, it's just like we have this history and people, it, it gets completely, um, I mean, obviously the right wing obscures it, but the left, I think, also obscures it because they they don't want to look at, at history with nuance, not in the sense of like, oh, let's ignore the horrors of it. But, you know, a lot of people, they just want to tell the story of like, OK, here's like the big general oppression and, and wickedness of American history that's happening and completely gloss over that every single one of these like right wing victories was meant with fierce resistance from communities. And we should be looking back at our you know ancestors in that way and trying to uphold those legacies, um, too. 
And uh, you know, again, like country music is is a great example of that. But you know, you know, southern southern history is filled with you know incredible stories of people standing up against um, you know obviously slavery, and then you know later uh, you know capitalism in general and, and Jim Crow. Like that, that's like as much of the history of the South and its Texas as anything else, in my opinion, is the history of resistance and kind of left wing politics. And what they've been able, and, and hell, uh, on top of that too. Um, you know, these states weren't even Republican up until you know, a couple decades ago. Um, and, you know, a big part of that, I will say, though, is the fact that the Democrats really are happy to position themselves as like the party of like the, the doctors and the lawyers and the you know upper middle class um, that you sort of have lost touch uh, with those kind of more like you know, Southern progressive values, because I think a lot of people from that part of the country feel like to be a progressive actually means like rejecting you know, where they live and the people, you know, you know, their culture and their history and all that kind of stuff, which I, again, don't think is helpful. Anyways, I'm not trying to make grand sweeping statements or anything. I guess I am. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I just think that there's just a lot to, to dive into. And I just think that it's it's something that, that has been sorely missing, especially right now um, when we actually have this incredible moment where we have like a new left, like something that is actually very different. And we're able to write that and to be able to say like, OK, these are the people that we're drawing on. These are the histories that we're drawing on. It's like, hell, you know, I think it'd be, it will be very helpful, especially um, in doing the kind of politics that I'd like to see in Texas and in the South in general, um, if we're actually able to start pointing to some of those great examples. Sure. Yeah. And um, I think that like uh, the the history of and, and just the attitude of like, you know, being proud of just being a working person yeah. um, along with the Christian, you know, a lot of the, mm -hmm. the religious sort of um, impulses of the South, you know, obviously those have been taken over by the right in a lot of ways in the mainstream. But, um, you know, that's one thing that I'm kind of I've been trying to do more like I was talking about with my dad also trying to like appeal to those more like, you know, senses of uh, charity and uh, equality that I think that we've, um, you know, a, a lot of, at, at least in the mainstream, uh, it seems like the more religious folks have lost sight of that stuff as well. And that's another thing that I think we should be trying to reclaim, whether we're, you know, actively religious or not. Like I'd say I'm, you know, an atheist, but I still, you know, I grew up with those values. And I think that it's it's hard for me to like really to divorce those from what, you know, the progressive values that I develop as well. Oh, exactly. I mean, look, it's just like, I think so too. And it's just like, there's just has been a, a very successful campaign basically to, to make uh, parts of, of U.S. culture, the better parts of U.S. culture and U.S. history, and to either completely obscure it or to just claim it uh, for signs that never represented them. You know what I mean? How it's like, look, the South, like political history was just like all these like populists um you know for like pretty much the vast majority of its history i mean that's the only time we've ever had a viable like third party movement in this country was when you had like the american populace who were poor farmers white and black across the south in texas and we started getting together realizing they were being screwed over by the financial class um and then they rose up and they they fundamentally changed us politics and uh you know that ended up turning the populist party ended up turning into the socialist party and then there's no doubt about it that we wouldn't have had the successes of like the uh of the new deal um without all those people laying that groundwork um you know it's just like it's it's just like you don't even have to go obscure to find those those histories and narratives is what i'm trying to say I'm like hell man like LBJ, who's not somebody who I'm, I'm trying to defend. And I think some people have gotten a little too comfortable with that because he's an absolute monster. And the, the war in Vietnam was a horrendous, you know, imperialist uh, war. But, you know, you look at what was going on domestically in the United States, um, you know, the great society, all of these programs, you know, fighting for things like Medicare, um, Medicaid, you know, providing for people, you know, just based on their need, right? Um, you know, those values, um, you know, those came out of, you know, one in American politics, but two, like, you know, very much like this kind of Southern politics and Southern understanding. It's just like the templates there, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. Uh, we, if we, as, as much as we can make, uh, you know, being on the left and progressive values about empowering the individual as well as like, you know, helping your neighbor and, and that, yeah. that sort of thing, I think is, is super important and um you know you said you went through a libertarian phase as so many people do i, I wouldn't say i ever really went through I, definitely when i first kind of learned about it i was like hmm, that's, that's kind of I, I i get where they're coming from you know and something i've been saying lately is like i i think in the united states anyway like the biggest block of people who i think share values that obviously they interpret in different ways are just like the very basic 
feels like a very American value to me that, hey, you do whatever you want. I'll do whatever I mm -hmm. want as long as you're not hurting anybody. If we can frame things in that way, which I think we we don't really realize how many people would would kind of come over and at least listen if we could sort of frame things with, with that as the main value. No, I mean, I agree completely. And, you know, just to be above waters, like, you know, for me, I mean, libertarian might even be a funny way to describe it. I mean, like for me, it was just like, you know, I, I, I realized that the Democrats were full of shit. Um, mm -hmm. you know, pretty early on. And, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a liberal family, so I guess it's a kind of embarrassing way that I was rebelling. But, you know, I, I realized that the Democratic Party was just like not, did not have our interests at heart. And, you know, I, I was stupid enough to think that the Republicans, just because they play, uh, you know, working class guy on TV, uh, were looking out for us. But, you know, I, I was an idiosyncratic, like conservative, like, I, you know, I hated, uh, you know, obviously any kind of gay bashing, the, the racist stuff. I always thought that that wasn't a conservative conservative value. Um, and I also didn't really care about cutting taxes on the rich. Really, what I cared about was like fighting for working people. And again, you know, that's just something that happens when you have an undeveloped brain at 14, um, that you, know, you think that it's, a, you know, John McCain or whatever, um, you know, who's trying to, to do that instead of realizing that, oh, actually, both of these people are just full of, you know, full of it, and they're not looking out for us. Um, you know, and like, that's why my transition to becoming a socialist was, you know, pretty quick, uh, because I realized, okay, there's actually a political program out here, um, that is, uh, fighting for the people I want to fight for. And is like trying to fight for those, uh, those values too, of just like, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Like this whole world is built off of people's labor and the way that we force people to do it is disgusting, but it's incredible. The, the human potential that, that we have, and I always find that to be something that we should tap into a little bit more too it's like it's an amazing thing to be able to build a building or do make a bridge or care for people you know healthcare workers you know educate people i mean those are amazing things and those come from people's incredible um, humility and their you know and their work value you know their work ethics and it's just like for me it just like it was like a light bulb you know switching on once i was able to put two and two together that is okay there's actually a politics that is of working people fighting for working people um out there instead of you know the the, the pony shell we get from.